In this video, I'm gonna tell you seven signs that you're going to be very successful in electrical engineering, even if you don't feel like it right now. But basically, if you are doing these seven things, or at least like five of them or four of them, then you're definitely well on your way to be successful. If you're here for the first time, my name is Ali al Karaguli. I am a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Job Propulsion Laboratory, and I'm having way too much fun in my job as an electrical engineer, and I want you to have as much fun as I do. And that's why I make these videos. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the very first sign that you're gonna be successful in electrical engineering is that you chose it because it's something you are interested in and not because you are doing it for the money or to get a job. And this is something that really infuriates me. Nothing I hate more than people that leave comments and say, is electrical engineering gonna give me a job? I really don't hate it. I don't care about it. Uh, is it gonna give me a job? And guys, if your goal is to get a job and just make money, do not do electrical engineering. Go do something else. Go do something related to business. Learn how to sell, learn how to market, learn how to start an online business. Like there are so many easier avenues that you can do online to make money. Electrical engineering, in my opinion, is not one of them. Yes, the pay is okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty comfortable. And yes, there is job security, especially if you're good at what you do. But money should not be the main reason to do this. The main reason should, to do this is because you're curious about it. And what does it mean to be curious about it? It means you're curious about electronics. You're curious about electromagnetic physics. You have looked at the different branches and at least identified something that gets you going. Now, I'm not saying you have to love it. It's very unreasonable to love it, especially if you are doing the classes in, in college and the uh, classes are very brutal and hard and the professors suck and the assignments are brutal. I totally get that. But if you're not at least thinking, okay, this is something I'm very interested in and I want to learn more about, you're already screwed. Second sign you will succeed in electrical engineering is that you are interested in physics. And this is something that really triggered me because I posted a YouTube short a few days ago talking about how one of the coolest parts of electrical engineering is that you get to study physics, which physics is amazing because you get to learn and understand the real world. So many people who are engineering majors commented saying, actually, no, that's a lie. Like physics is the worst thing ever. I'm taking physics classes and I hate it. And if you're hating physics, I mean, I get it. The classes can be very hard. The math can be very challenging. You might need some extra help. But if you absolutely hate physics, if you're not interested at all about the physics laws that govern the world and make us understand the world, you are not going to be a successful engineer. You're going to be a mediocre engineer at best. And again, that's because engineering is applied physics. Basically, engineering is taking physics laws, mostly the laws of Newton from the 1600s and the laws of Maxwell, Faraday, and Tesla on the 1800s, 1900s, and basically applying them to the real world. And if you are not remotely interested or curious about these physics laws or find it at least fascinating how the world works, you're not going to do well in engineering. That's a guarantee. Third sign you're going to succeed in electrical engineering is that you are looking a little bit ahead of electrical engineering and thinking about what specific subfield within electrical engineering you're interested in. And I say this because electrical engineering is very broad. Basically, within electrical engineering, you can study many things. You can study communications, software, embedded systems, power systems, energy systems, microelectronics. You can learn how to fabricate the microelectronics. The opportunities are really endless. So if you have taken uh, the time to look at the different career options within electrical engineering, and the different subfields that you can pursue, you're going to be a lot more likely to succeed. Why is that? Because that basically shows that you're a bit, you're serious about diving deep into one of these topics. And many electrical engineering students have the misconception that electrical engineering is only about like power or electricity. Uh, but no, like electrical engineering is about electromagnetic physics. It's about basically learning that electric fields come from charges and that if you take a charge and basically hold it in space, it's going to create an electric field and you take it and move it around. That changing electric field is going to create a magnetic field. And if you're changing it like back and forth and you're changing the speed at which you're changing it, that magnetic field is also going to induce an electric field back. And that's basically Maxwell's equations in a nutshell. If you understand that, that's basically the foundation of electrical engineering. And that can be, then go ahead and be applied to different fields. Fourth sign you're going to succeed in electrical engineering is if you find yourself trying to learn things about it outside of class. And what I mean by that, I'll tell you a story. When I was studying engineering, I first started out in mechanical, then I switched to aerospace, and then I switched to biomedical, and then I switched to electrical engineering. In the United States, you can switch your major. So usually that delays your graduation, but I was ultra hardcore. And I think I took like 23 credits and like 22 credits in my fall junior and junior and fall and spring. And I still graduated in three and a half years somehow. Basically, when I finished a semester of electrical engineering, I was really burnt out from the exams and I didn't want to think about the class at all. But after like a week passed on my winter break, I found myself watching YouTube videos about how transistors worked, how fields work, how charges work. And I started noticing, whoa, I don't have classes and I don't have homework assignments. Why am I still watching stuff about this? That means I'm genuinely interested in it. And in that moment, I knew I was going to be successful at this thing because I was doing it for fun. I was literally like sitting down and watching TV. And uh, instead of like playing anything else, I would go on YouTube and I would watch a few channels. One channel was called Veritasium by a guy, I think his name was Derek. He makes, makes amazing videos explaining how like visualizing charges, electric fields, magnetic fields, transistors, electronics, things of that nature. And then there was another YouTube channel by some Russian guy, Eugene something, very, very complicated Russian last name. And he would make very cool physics visuals about Fourier transforms and Fourier analysis. Yeah, I found that thing to be very, very cool. So 
So if you're finding yourself watching some content, I mean, if you're watching this channel of mine right now, that's already a really good sign because that means that you are genuinely interested and you're trying to learn from someone who has gone through it like me, and then you're definitely on the right track. Fifth sign you are going to succeed in electrical engineering is that you enjoy solving problems. And this is basically a mindset and a skill set. It's two things in combined. It's basically when problems happen to you in life, like something goes wrong. Like let's say I spill this water on my thing. Well, it's a very corny example. But let's say something wrong happens, like you don't get the job you want, or you don't get the internship you want, or you don't get something that you want. How do you perceive that? Do you perceive that as a problem that you can solve? Like maybe my LinkedIn profile needs to get better, my resume needs to get better, or do you just completely fall apart and give up and don't recover? And guys, don't get me wrong. Like sometimes in life, you don't get what you want and it's okay to feel sad for a little bit. It's okay to feel down about it a little bit. You can even cry about it. You can go do however, express however you want to express. I don't care. But the idea is after some time passes and some of the emotional pain heals, what do you do then? Do you try to analyze the situation and figure out why things went wrong and try to fix it? Or do you just completely give up? And I say that because electrical engineering specifically or engineering in general is very, very hard and it's very, very taxing. And if you're not the type of person who's going to sit down and figure things out and look at your mistakes and learn from your mistakes and have a constant improvement mindset, uh, you're just already done. And that's why it's both a mindset and a skill set because learning how to solve problems the technical skill, you learn that in physics, you learn that in math, you learn that in engineering, where you lay down variables and you solve them in equations and you try to figure out how things work. But the mindset is more important, where it's like, when things happen to you, do you view it as a problem to solve or is the world ending? Are you doomed? Sixth sign you are going to succeed in electrical engineering is you have other friends who are also electrical engineers. And basically, this is something that's very, very important. When I was an undergrad in electrical engineering, I had a lot of friends. I made a lot of friends. I was very lonely in the beginning, my first year. And then I decided, okay, screw this. I'm going to go ahead and try to meet people and talk to people. Now I get it. A lot of things have shifted online, or maybe if you're someone who's more introverted. Uh, now we do have a Discord server that is obviously a bunch of electrical engineering students and computer science students and some computer engineering students as well from all over the world. And I think there's about 500 of us right now. We basically hang out. We talk about all things engineering. We talk about projects. Maybe you can meet some people over there. I'll go ahead and put a link in the first comment so you can go ahead and join if you're someone studying engineering and you're curious. But basically, if you have other people that you can talk to and obsess about engineering with, you're going to be a lot more likely to succeed. And there's just no other way around that. That's because humans are social creatures. So if you have other people in your social circle that are doing something and having fun with it, you're going to want to be part of it as well. And that's the reality of the situation. Now, the seventh sign you're going to succeed in electrical engineering is you have the desire to be ahead of 99% of students and be in the top 1%. What do I mean by that? Some students just want to be average and just say, oh, I want to get a job. I don't care. I'm just going to do the bare minimum. But other students are like, no, I want to improve. I want to learn. I really want to do what it takes to get to the top. And not to worry, I made a whole video about how you can do that. So you should go ahead and watch that so you can be in the top 1% of students. I will see you in there. Peace, love.